morning uh, for the distinguished panelists today and all the participants for this meeting on uh, specific on India and really happy that I could make it here and then speak a bit about uh, Vision for Indian Space Program. My slides are so many so I will just skip through them because I would like to give you a, a little bit of picture of what <coughs> we have in store for the space. Uh, uh, all of you know that India started a space program uh, while uh, the leading space uh, ferry nations were in the very advanced stage and we had a very big gap as far as technology and capabilities were concerned. Maybe uh, something like 50 years of gap that existed and uh, we were able to build, bridge that gap substantially today uh, and we could develop quite lot of capability both in uh, areas of many in the areas of launch vehicles as well as in the spacecraft and the whole the driving factor has been applications in India uh, basically we need to our funding from the government has been uh, very small throughout and uh, we were able to gather much of the funds uh, by putting to use this money back into the society and showcasing that what we can do with the space and there's really gone with the politicians and the government that we were able to sustain this whole program very well. Today, uh, the space program uh, supports most of the national needs in terms of the communication, remote sensing, now into navigation. We also uh, had uh, uh, demonstrated our scientific capability and exploratory capability in terms of uh, the missions that we did to Moon as well as to Mars, which has really captured the attention for its frugal nature and also the low cost approaches that we have done. In case, in the, in the uh, side of this launch vehicle technology, what we have done is also uh, uh, up to the LVM3 or GSLV Mark 3 that has already been developed and launched. The early developments of SLV3 and SLV are no longer there. They were the technology developing, uh, you know, learning, uh, you know, uh, work. But later we have three of the generations of launch vehicles, the PSLV, GSLV and GSLV Mark III uh, right now in production and launch. And we also have plans to upscale these rockets and also build the next class of rockets in the years to come. <coughs> we are working on it. We also have quite a bit of technology in terms of the propulsion, either liquid, solid, hybrid, cryo, semi-cryo, all of them that we have really developed with the support of many other space faring countries as well as our indigenous effort. In terms of engines which becomes a powerhouse for most of our launch vehicles and spacecrafts, we have a quite a wide range of uh, expertise in terms of realizing these engines and they are being produced in India. As, as we know that the ecosystem that is available for aerospace in India is quite at its you know, uh, in the very beginning even now when we do not have industries who are capable of uh, really taking up the challenges of you know end-to-end -end realization design and realization of these systems so most of this work is done within this row really uh, and we have only about 150 to 200 industries who are participating as suppliers of parts and systems not really integrated you know uh, entities like engines today still we don't have that capability but still we are looking towards uh, that capability development in india one of the uh, one of the event that actually uh, got attention has been the launch of multiple satellites, 104 satellites in PSLV, and it also established the way the PSLV has been you know, looked at in the global market as a the reliable launch services provider. We also did many uh, interesting missions, such as the launching a crew module to uh, space and then bringing it back safely and recovering it. We also did uh, have many missions of uh, uh, this nature accommodating spacecraft in very unconventional ways in very short notices and we were able to engineer systems uh, to mount and launch them very effectively through PSLV. So through this route we could launch almost 200 plus uh, spacecraft uh, through PSLV in addition to those 60 plus spacecrafts of Indian only. The GSLV has been uh, the second generation launch vehicle we developed. Uh, now it is uh, reached an operational stage with the five of those successful flights in the recent times and we are having plans to upgrade to reach almost three tons to GTO in the years to come. The GSLV Mark III has been our third generation operational launch vehicle. Now we had uh, two of these flights and the first development flight we put a, a, a communication satellite of 3.2 tons in orbit, GTO. 
and now we are working for still its higher capacity. The GSLM Earth in its first mission did again uh, one of the pre precursor to our human space program uh, of launching a module and then a suborbital flight and recovering it. It was also an interesting mission. An interesting approach when the cryo stage was still not ready, we did a launch uh, to demonstrate its lower stages and prove its design maturity. One of the interesting developments that we are working on is, uh, is a small satellite launch vehicle which is a solid propulsion based, uh, having a capability to put smaller satellites for the emerging markets in small satellites. Here also we look at multiple accommodation possibilities of satellites in this mission. We work on technologies uh, like the air breathing propulsion which is one of the interesting technology. We have a, a very strong sounding rocket program in which, which uses as a technology base for testing newer and newer elements. One of them is the uh, EMRJ dual mode ramjet engine which we demonstrated successfully with this positive thrust being generated. Another interesting uh, development was in a wind reusable launch vehicle we launched and then uh, uh, in a suborbital mission and brought it back and did a simulated landing on sea. Uh, and we are continuing this program with a still bigger version and we are planning to put it in orbit and bring back uh, for possible experiments and for long stay in orbit. The development of semi-cryogenic engine for 200 ton thrust is the one which is currently going on in a, in a high speed and we want to integrate this engine into our GSLU Mark III and increase its payload capability to almost 6 tons to GTO and also have plans to build clustered versions of it to make a much more all liquid powerful launcher for possible uh, exploratory missions. Our work on electric propulsion system has, uh, has now been successful. We have placed our first electric thrusters in orbit in GSAT uh, 9 and it, has, it is working very well. And we have also developed high capacity thrusters, almost 300 millinewton, and we want to put it in our all electric spacecraft in the next generation spacecraft. Currently, design work is progressing. The Chandrayaan 2 is the second uh, mission to Moon which we are working on, which has uh, an orbiter lantern. Uh, and uh, this will demonstrate our soft landing capability and also a roll up on the moon and the launch will happen maybe by this year end. We are also developing technology testing vehicles. It's, this is basically a liquid stage where we will be using a throttleable engine and have a vehicle where which we can test different concepts like a, a carrier vehicle for scramjet research, a carrier vehicle for our human space flight capsule demonstration missions and also a vertical landing concepts demonstration. This currently this project is at the design stage. Now coming to the space applications, this is our key driver where we look at the socio-economic security, sustainable development, governance, and disaster risk, this risk reduction being the key uh, uh, you know, areas where we use our applications and spacecraft. And our satellite systems called INSATs are been doing very well in meeting all the national requirements and because we are the only provider of this capability throughout the Indian continent. Coming to us, observation, we have thematic programs uh, covering land, water, high resolution, ocean and weather and climate and this uh, set of satellites are being built and launched in a regular, regular way. We have almost 14 satellites of this class currently working in orbit, meeting all our requirements but really the national demand is much higher. We need another 15 or 16 satellites to be launched. We are unable to build and then launch them. That is the, the type of uh, limitations that we are actually facing. Coming to the uh, navigation, we have launched all those uh, uh, seven satellites now in orbit. They are working very well and it is meeting the navigational requirements, supporting uh, developing this capability, but quite a lot need to be done to make it into an operational status, to bring it to instruments, and that is uh, currently the work which we are doing with the industries. In the recent times, we have built many satellites in all the ranges, in the navig satellites, communication satellites, remote sensing, including microwave satellites, and also helped university satellites to come up uh, with the proper association of academia, and also the two of our campus in building these satellites with the help of Indian industries. Two of those navig satellites have been built by Indian industry within our premises. The popularization applications through our geo portal is another important agenda we have. We have an e-governance, g-governance route through a Bhuvan application which is similar to a G uh, one which is specific to India using other imagery coming from our own satellites. 
uh, we have developed host applications where it can be distributed through all the state portals. I can see almost 30 of the states of uh, India are already having its own national portal, where, and we use crowdsourcing. We have developed host applications, including mobile applications, where people can participate and get information for <coughs> even the village and panchayat level administration. Our scientific results in the Mars orbit has been phenomenal. Uh, even it was launched for a six month life, but still it's working very strong and having enough of data, and it's now made available in the national community for of scientists uh, to work on these results. AstroSat has been our solar no, orbital observatory. Some of the important discoveries, including identification of the exoplanet, has been the very interesting result from AstroSat. The scientific missions, including Chandrayaan 2, Venus Orbiter, which we are working on, X-ray polarimeter satellite, the Aditya L1, which we want to launch to the L1 Lagrangian point to study the sun, are some of the scientific experiments currently uh, in progress. Uh, in India, we are looking at national development priorities, which are very large, which I, won't, I don't want to dwell much at this point, but it includes uh, quite a host of applications where our government and Prime Minister Modi is very keen on bringing this space technology to much larger number of departments. We have been working with 20 other departments of the government of India, now we are increased to almost 80 departments where we are creating applications where our space technology will be used for day-to-day -day governance and information gathering and also support many of these uh, requirements. For this, we have created a, a big roadmap in terms of spacecraft building, uh, where we want to increase the production capability of our internal spacecraft demands, reaching almost 30 or 40 per year, and all, including both uh, the communication, scientific, as well as navigational capability. We also are planning to expand the capability from the current seven to larger number to cover larger areas. <coughs> The requirements of India are quite uh, different, as you know, that's a very diverse country with having a lot of needs and aspirations, as you were very clearly brought out in this study, and uh, uh, I, I, I'm sure it will be much more evident in your study uh, for the ESPA to bring out such an excellent study on the, the potential of space for our national development. And let me tell you that our program and progress process is focused on India-specific results from space and this has been our tradition and this has been the way we have been working and our capability for both launches and building spacecrafts are currently not even able to meet what we are expected to do within our con you know, country and we would like to increase that capability to meet our national aspirations. And for this we have created a very big roadmap uh, in terms of the building launch vehicles which is very very important capability. But I am not you know, telling that spacecraft and applications are lesser capability, but this is something that is a technology point of view is very important. And we are working towards the, enhancing our launch capability and also increasing the numbers that we are trying to produce. One of the interesting things is to produce PSLV in large numbers. We have been working with industries to take this job themselves, but uh, today we see that the industry itself is not capable of uh, no, you know, taking up that challenge. So what we are trying to do is to make bring the industries to our campus and make the work and then learn through uh, doing it along with us and then take it uh, to them and then do it maybe in one year, two year time frame or now. And, but, but when we talk about the newer launch vehicles which we are developing, we want this to happen very beginning. With that, let me uh, conclude and thank you so much for, uh, for this quick summary that I was able to make. Thank you.